lawn. Okay. I look at this tool, I check with my neighbor, is this yours? You know, what is it doing here? And I have no idea what it is, right? So you're busy, you're running around going to work. I just picked it up and put, put it in, in, near my porch. Then I looked at, you know, after a few months I looked at it, you know, what has this been sitting around? And I pick it up, it's a bolt cutter. So oh. these guys, they were driving around, they were probably got suspicious, mm. a cop was chasing them, they took that thing out, they left, they dumped it somewhere, right? Mm. That's what they do. So when we think, see, now what I should have done was taken it to the cop, say, fingerprint this thing, mm. because you'll find something, right? I, that's an indicator. Mm. So uh, one other piece of uh, information, vacation patrol. When mm. I go on a vacation, I call the sheriff's office and say, I'll be gone, can you please patrol my home when I'm gone? And they will do that. It's a free service, no charge, they will come out there and patrol your home and just make sure everything is okay. Once in a while, right? That is, uh, and uh, the fence, you know, I, when you have a fence by the creek, you know, our creeks uh, are not being used by our citizens, right? Now we are building a trail by the village for, for us to walk into the, into the creek area. The only time we, we use the creek is when we are cleaning it up. We have Boy Scout uh, troops that are going down there cleaning it up. And, and otherwise we don't use it. Now if we had a trail there, then our citizens are using it. Now these, uh, these folks who are targeting homes will not do that. But what they do is, they go into the creek, and then they jump over a fence, and then they break into your home. That, that's a good modus operandi, because for, for, for the best way to break into a home is not from the front, right? I mean, they will walk into home to the front to figure out, you know, is somebody at the home or not. Now what they do is, their objective is to break, go to the back somehow. If you have a fence gate open, they will open it up, they'll walk in there. Now they have all day to break into your home. And, and uh, mm -hmm. another quick example, many examples. One of my friends was on a conference call uh, in the middle of the day, never works out of home. And he was on the phone and somebody rang the doorbell. He was very busy, he did not respond to it. So he kept on the call and 10 minutes later, he sees this big bang behind on the sliding door. He turns around and he sees this guy standing with a big rock and he's just hit his uh, patio door trying to break it. Right, and the guy, they, they had eye contact, he just crammed from there, right? So these things uh, happen all the time. I wonder how many of these homes that are broken into uh, have operational alarms, and you know, yeah. we didn't really address that. That, that is a major concern. So, so I, I, I can comment on that. In the analysis we did of the sheriff's report, um, it was uh, quite common that one of the entries was alarm went off, seems to be very effective. So in our neighborhood, I, I would say about 50, 60 percent of people have alarms. You know, whether it's monitored or not monitored, you know, most people have alarms, right? Safety tips, if you go on this link, it has tons of these, you know, what do we need to do, you know, alarm system, how it helps, it doesn't help, putting up a sign, even if you don't have a video camera monitoring of your home, you can put up a sign, the signs are like $10 for a dozen, right, on Amazon. You bring those signs, I give it around to my neighbors, hey, put up a sign. It, it, it is, it, all these are deterrents, you know. How do we place the maximum amount of deterrents where they don't target my neighborhood and go to a different neighborhood, right? That's the whole idea. Yes, uh, please pass that. I think that is good, good, good information in there. We had the, sher the sheriff office does a service where they come to your house, spend an hour, and look over everything. And I thought, well, I have pretty much no what they're going to say. Well, I learned quite a bit from it. So I have the uh, survey that they have you self-administered then you can contact them after that, and they'll come out and go through not only that, but many other things they probably never yeah. thought about. So I'm just sliding down there. Well, we can scan it in and send it to the email group. So while we do that, I'm going to quickly walk through some of the deterrents. That's from the website. So important to have a neighborhood safety watch in place. Install security cameras to monitor. Know your neighbors well. Watch out. Uh, okay, let's see what else. Think dead boards, you know, what they do is, you have a garage door which does not have a dead board, they walk into a backyard, they very quickly and easily open up that door, and now they are into your garage. And now if you have a, don't have a dead board from your, that fire door that leads into the house, it, it becomes much more easier for them to come in, right? Think dead board, that's important. Lock your fence doors. This is probably the most important, you protect your phone line, because if you have a monitoring system, they'll snip your phone line, right? Protect your phone line, make it difficult for them to snip it. Don't leave anything valuable in a car. They broke into my neighbor's uh, truck because he had a laptop bag, which was like 15 years laptop. It was worth $100, and they broke the windshield, or the, the, the windshield.
window to get access to that laptop back. Mm -hmm. And he had to spend like, you know, $100. He, he didn't worry about the fact he lost it. He lost like three days of his time trying to fix his uh, car back, right? So install motion sensor lights in front of your house. You know, it, it's, it's the most important thing. Anybody walks into your house, you're gone, you're on vacation. They walk near your house, the motion sensor turns on, they're like, okay, let's leave this home. Security cameras, beware of the dog signs. The surveillance. So all the, many of these tips are described in detail. Alarm systems, you know, what kind of alarm systems? You know, window, door sensors, glass sensors, outdoor alarm units, protect your data. You know, what we do is, we are all about, you know, when I go on a vacation, I don't care. If, they, if somebody wants to break in, in spite of all the things I have, I have a network attached storage which contains all my data, video, pictures, scan documents, everything is there. If they want to clean it, our jewelry does not sit in the house, it sits in the bank locker. I take that network attached storage, drop it off to my neighbor's house, now I'm completely relaxed. I don't worry about it now. They want to break in, they'll take stuff. They'll take, everything is replaceable now, right? Why did the cloud store in the cloud? I'm sorry, Why I could, the cloud, cloud is expensive still. I, I actually uh, am the GM for a cloud uh, data company, but uh, you know, for the consumer right now, it's still expensive. But cloud is definitely an option. Notify your neighbor, stop newspaper delivery, stop mail. When you go on vacation, happy to drive to the airport long-term parking, you know, we give the keys away, and we have an address, right? Uh, press home. They know where you live now. They can look through your registration paperwork, and now these guys will say, oh, this car is parked here, they're coming back in 10 days. Let's find out the address. Now they'll go to your home and break into it. Right? So, so what we do is we never put our address in our GPS system, and when I go on a vacation, I park it in long-term parking, I'll pull out my registration paperwork, take it with me. Somebody wants to break in, they will not know where I live. Right? Simple precautions like that. Notify Saratoga police you are going to be gone, additional patrolling. Vacation patrolling, they'll be out there at your home. So that, that, in a nutshell, is what I wanted to talk about. Let's see if you have any questions. Yes, uh, good information. How, how do you define a neighborhood, right? So does that, uh, how do we know if there is already a neighborhood, what's program in our neighborhood? Does the city keep these records, or is this more? Uh, yes, the city does keep track. So, do we? Do you have the by? Have you divided Saratoga in neighborhoods? So it's actually run by the community, by our citizens. Yeah. So yeah. How do? How big is the neighborhood? So it, three houses, ten houses, twenty yeah, houses. It's up to you to define, right? Yeah. So it there, it's not a black box, right? You you define how you want to create a neighborhood safety watch. In our in our neighborhood, eighty eight homes. Some neighborhoods, thirty homes will have a neighborhood safety okay. watch, right? So the thing is, for in our neighborhood. There is one entrance, there are two entry points, and then that's it. So that was a natural point. All the homes in these area is now part of the neighborhood safety watch. But then if you it extends out too much, it's up to you to define, you know, okay, my neighborhood watch will stop right here. And this is our constructor framework. Now, if somebody else wants to join in, you can tell them, hey, you can join us, or you can create your own neighborhood safety watch. Mm -hmm. Rishi, can you provide information? We, we sent you sent some research on the common video camera system that ties into a, a central? Yes. Can you share that yes. information? Yes, I will. Okay. Yep. In fact, I'll put it on the slide deck. By the way, uh, we have experience with a, uh, we did quite a bit of research on alarm companies, mm -hmm. and we found what we think is a pretty good one. If anyone's interested, we have to share the contact information with everyone. We looked at ADT and Brinks and uh, the horn company, whatever, yeah, and uh, we ended up with uh, one called the Alarm Company, of oh, uh, all right. things, we'll right. them. and we've been very happy with them, but I'm sure there are other good ones you may have some experience with, so that was our experience. So in our neighborhood, ADT came in, and then the same guy walking around, he basically provided service to everybody, so everybody had ADT. Then after like, and, and you, you have a typical deal, like the sheriff is not going to talk about it, $99, you get so many sensors and things like that. And then what we did was we figured out that you can, instead of ADT would charge us like $100 to install a sensor, including the sensor and the labor charge, right? We figured out that you can actually just purchase it online on Amazon. We figured out how to do that. That information was passed on. People started adding more sensors. You know, you bought the initial package, you added more sensors to it. And the whole, you know, it basically, and then after a few years, we realized we, pay, we were paying ADT, ADT $30 a month. We figured out there is a $10 a month alarm monitoring company, which was equally effective. So we all shifted over. We jumped over to this alarm company. 
So you know, once the neighborhood is collaborating, you can make it cheaper, faster, better, you know, all that stuff. So what is the new, these are the companies? I forget the name now, but uh, yes. There's one that advertises called uh, 24-7-999 or something. I will put in the oh, Yeah, included in your, in yes. your I don't know if they're good or bad, but I've heard they're ads, yes. I've I mean, heard, though, that ADP has a proprietary system and that prevents you from taking over. You, see, that's been able, exactly. You, you were able to? Yeah. With ADP? Yep. Okay. Oh, the same system? Yeah. Because when we shopped ADT, system, yeah. they told us that. Yeah, the, the pump system, I think, is a proprietary. It's proprietary. Yeah. Well, you know. It might be a newer system. Maybe you install your system. The, the best way to figure this out is when you have the guy installing your thing, the engineer who's out there, ask him, you know, how proprietary is this? And they'll tell or, you. Well, not when you have him installing it, no, before, before you choose the yeah. vendor. Yeah, <laughs> That's what we ask. And, yeah. and ours is wide open. Yeah. So. Yeah. There's a, <clears throat> another a part of it that a lot of people aren't aware of. If you uh, you can hook it up either to your hard line, yeah. your phone, good yep. point, yep. Fox line, yep. or Comcast or some of their cables, yes. and everybody I know who's uh, has a real strong alarm has a dedicated hard line yes. or uses the hard line. No, 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 no. That's no, you have a common error. error. That's, no, that's yeah. the one you can cut. Yeah, because you can We're cut it. That's single point of failure. You, you have you we, have to. We do wireless. That We're wireless. We do wireless. No you can't, you cut. can't cut the air. Yeah, no, they they install a, a, a cellular card yeah. inside. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's okay as long as the cell system's up and running. You know, <laughs> yeah, but it, the wire's easier to cut than... Yeah, the wire well, you have to armor it. <laughs> you always have to armor that. You have to take it outside that little box on your side of your house and bring it inside. Yeah. And then they can do all the cutting they want, but they can't get to your alarm. And that's what I did on mine, and it looks... You can cut all you want. It's okay. still there. Okay. So yeah. that's the other key. That's the yeah. other key. Which most people don't do. That's an important right. extra step. It's, it costs extra money, but yes. if you have a decent system, that's the way you want to do it. Because right. that way, don't cut it. Don't, you know, trip the alarm, but it'll report to Central Station uh, that they broke in, but they think, you know, well, if you have a box outside, it'll ring, and they'll, they'll be scared away. If you do a silent alarm, then they'll be inside and they'll get caught. But I always recommend an outside box because that stops them at the point of entry. Yeah, rather than silent where yeah. it takes five, ten but minutes. But cell cellular system. systems have gotten pretty reliable now. Look, what's that? Cell system, cell, the mobile. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's pretty reliable nowadays, so yeah. you know, that's probably the way to go. Could be. I, yeah, I'm just old fashioned, I guess. Like, and if you have an earthquake, no, no, your great phone system. line still it's works. Just, just that I think. Uh, because of the availability wise, right, right. the cellular might be the a quicker addition for right, right. a yeah, lot of people to add. Anything but is better than nothing. That's yeah, the, exactly. That's my yeah. motto. So. Yeah. Let's let me ask you while we're still in the room. Uh, oh, I just had a comment. So my wife and I are retired. We did retire, and so recently, just to also be aware, we had two instances in the last six months of where my wife would call us in the garage, we've got groceries in the back, right? The garage door is open. She's putting the groceries away and somebody stops and comes up. It's just sort of an opportunistic, you know, they see the garage door open. Mm -hmm. You know, and they'll come up and they'll say, you know, just say, well, wait a minute. And they'll say, oh, we were just wondering if you needed any window washing, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, mm -hmm. it, when you know exactly, they, they would the point run is, in they were just driving by, saw the garage door open, yeah. and it wouldn't be a house burglary, but you know, in the garage, just grab, grab your bike or yeah, grab, and grab, your bikers, yeah, and grab something yeah. in the garage. So you have to be vigilant all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking, speaking of vigilant, let me ask um, again while we're in, in the room here. Um, we have thank you for volunteering as squad captain. Any other volunteers while we're here so we can what? stay in the organization? You've got it broken up, sort of, so... We, we need one for Songa. Claridge? Uh, my only problem is I may not be there that much longer. I'm thinking maybe. So I don't know what I'll be affected by. Well, how about, do we have a co-captain? Do I don't know. Uh, I mean, uh... For McCarty's uh, list? I agree with that. Okay. And yeah. Jim, last year? She is our LGS ILS. Are you on our list of McCarty's list? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I typed them in the email. Thing.
So any other questions on the process or what it takes to establish uh, the neighborhood safety watch? Anything I can answer about the process involved? And I will send out the deck. Uh, I'll add some more information to this. I'll send out the deck. And anything else I can help you with, right? Uh, what I else want can more I information on what food is served at these parties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'll tell you what we serve. We serve finger food because it's a lot easier. Pork, uh, you know, keep it really simple. So finger you bring food, your but a lot of finger food makes it uh, easy. Keep it. And, uh, Pizza. Uh, and I'm sorry, just be, uh, any other, so we still need McCartysville, uh, Sumner. Uh, oh, we have, I'm sorry, we still need Sumner, Claridge, Blue Meadow. I don't know where any of our seats are, but Monica and I are willing to be co-captains on the Grey Okay. If All right. Janet and Joe would like to join us. Well, I think we'll, I mean, we we'll have, do that. We oh, have how you. many? Sorry. 20 yeah. houses in between, so right. I guess we do. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. Good. Then after the meeting, maybe they can get me yeah. the information. Yeah. I'm just kind of surprised with the few number of people that are here from our community. You know, because this has been discussed a lot in the last six weeks, and you know, decent turnout, but I would have expected. It was a holiday better. weekend, yeah. 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 I, I, I found yeah. out about it three days ago. Yeah, they don't, I, I don't know about the six weeks. So, no, actually, so actually, two, people two, people yeah, so two, two points on that. One is it's a holiday weekend, and a lot of people oh, came yeah. to me and said, mm -hmm. hey, I'm 100% right. I'm in, but right. I'm gone that weekend. Yeah, I wasn't going to make it, but I should have let yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, oh, I, see, I see what you're saying. And, and then, no, I'm sorry. And secondly, um, we're still trying to get the word out, so yeah. please, please, please make this known to all your neighbors because I don't know them all yet. Even a room doesn't know them all yet. Um, <laughs> ben, I have a so suggestion. So I think, you know, one of the ideas would be, you know, each one of you, yeah. make sure the neighbor is in the group. You yeah. know, next door, yeah. left yeah, right. Sort of exactly. Everybody knows a different group. Yeah. And tell them that, you know, make sure your next door is in so that mm -hmm. they can get it all. And you, know, you can feed in the emails to the, I don't know if we have the email, maybe we can put the email address to the two of us. You can send an email to us to add the new neighbor. Mm -hmm. right. exactly. You had a question? So I do have a question. Um, this is a safe place to ask, I think. Um, Jeff, can you So the, the home that is empty but is well maintained, you know, it's not a problem. But there is a blight ordinance where you can report to the city. You know, if you have weeds and things like that, it's like overgrown. It's a, you can report to the city. They'll come out there, monitor it, mm -hmm. and and then they will place a fine on the homeowner. It will be sent out, and they have to pay for it, and it starts accumulating. And then if they don't pay that, then it becomes a lien on the house and things like that. So that's a process that is established in the city. $100 per violation, which exponentially grows. And Arun and I just wrote our emails up here. So <coughs> anyone who's not already part of the group, please email us and we'll include them. I have your neighbors. So uh, I would highly recommend you know, uh, designing a little flyer, printing like uh, 50 copies and dropping it off in everybody's doorstep. So that people know that we are doing a neighborhood safety watch and announce the meeting date in that. That we are planning a book the library thing, announce it in that flyer and say we are trying to recruit block captains. And then it takes a little bit of an effort to get the block captains to enroll the first time. But once the thing is in motion, you know, it's, it just works very well. How often do you run those meetings? What's the, about once a month, once no. a quarter? You know, it's like once a, year. Once, once a year. year. once a year. During the block party is when we bring the whole block captain neighborhood together. And no, just the block captains. The block captains, it's totally up to you. you know? oh. it, it's on a need-to-have basis, right? You will, once you have them all enrolled in the system, you will have that first meeting with them. And then that's it. You know, if you have a newcomer who comes in, a new block captain, 
then you will have uh, one of you will reach out and communicate. Okay, okay, this is what we're doing. You don't need to have everything else is email, text message. Exactly. Whatever. Exactly. The one time is when you kick this off. That's when you need all the block captains together. That's it. And then you meet once a year during the block party, or some neighborhood meeting, or you have a neighborhood safety forum and you you advertise it in your community and everybody shows up there and that's your neighborhood meeting that's happening. Anything else? So there's this app called Nextdoor. Yes, Nextdoor is very good. It's already on it, so if you're not on, you can just download it. It's already on Android and iPhone. Just download it, it's for free. And register yourself, and you'll be part of the Nextdoor you know, yep. neighborhood. Well, our neighborhood here is called Fair Weather Health. About 2,200 households are already on it, 2,200 out of 12,000. So it's yeah. creeping up very fast. When we first, when it was rolled out by the city a few years ago, we had like 100. And now it's up to 2,200. So it's and the main focus yeah. of that app is just information availability. Yeah. Yes, like you so have you, something you for can sale. Do it and it, it, others are posting, so you can see what's going yeah. on. Yeah, some announcements and yeah, people, friends of interest. And people have things for sale. Want to hire a gardener? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It might be nice to know too when people are expecting a meeting van for furniture. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, yeah just had that with a neighbor to, to wipe vans out front. So I'm like walking across the street. What's going on? I mean, <laughs> they just have to be here. <laughs> yeah, just to let people know. Now, has everyone signed in? Uh, you know, do we have uh, everybody signed in? Okay. So I'll send out the deck to. I I don't, but are you willing to share them? Yes, absolutely. I'll Yes, I'll, yeah, I'll send you, send you a link. Yeah. And uh, what I'll do is uh, today, at some point, I'll email out the, the deck. It'll, it'll be a slide share link. You can just go in there and, uh, and you can share it. You can take that link and share it with everybody else. What else? Well, thank you all for joining in today. I really appreciate thank it. Uh, thank hopefully, it was a productive session.